It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. John C. Clayton enjoys today a fulfilling life with her husband. But several years ago, she was struggling with several issues like illness and depression. Devastating. My whole life was a mess. Drug addiction and alcoholism. I had so many physical problems and of course the depression just, just got worse. Really destroyed. I felt so desperate, so helpless. So desperate, desperate so, so helpless. helpless. My name is Chance, and this is my story. I had relationship problems. I had um, pretty much everything you can imagine. I had depression, suicidal thoughts. I also had a, you know, a relationship that lasted uh, 10 years, and I thought I was going to get married. And then I got a call one day from my boyfriend stating that, oh, I'm not coming home. Her usual sadness became depression when a boyfriend she really loved broke up with her through the phone. What are you saying? I mean, I thought we were happy together. I, I, what if, I'm not coming back. Are, are you joking? No, I'm never coming home again. No, no, I don't. So, of course, that made the depression even worse. So my life just got worse and worse. Just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it gets worse. I had a migraine headache because I had chronic migraine headaches. And this one was so, so bad. I mean, it was pounding. On top of all that sadness, Shantse suffered from terribly painful chronic migraines that she could not mitigate with anything. I'm like on the verge of, you know, vomiting. It was bad. So when I met my husband, it got worse. He wasn't my husband yet. He was a boyfriend. Shantse found another boyfriend and she loved him. To her dismay, this caring man was also addicted to drugs to a degree where he couldn't help or control himself. Everything seemed to go wrong in Shantse's life. I'm addicted to these things. Jesus, please just help me. Then I said, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? In the end, I ended up doing witchcraft. In my mind, I was so desperate. You know, when you hit rock bottom, you're like, you'll, you'll try anything. Shantse was so desperate, she tried witchcraft as a last resort. But of course, that didn't help in any way, shape, or form, and it made everything even worse. So I tried it, got involved. Did I get any better? No, I got extremely worse. What happened then was um, it got so bad that I became so suicidal that one night I, I almost you know, took my life. I wanted to take a bunch of pills because at that point I was taking so much medication. Sean say Clayton couldn't handle all that sadness and suffering anymore, and she was really close to doing something terrible. Fortunately, she was strong enough to keep fighting on. And that was the night I was going to commit suicide. One day, she received a pamphlet in the mail with information about the Help Center. Finally, a little hope appeared in her life. You know, it was, a, it was a flyer, it was more than that, it was like a pamphlet, and it had all these testimonies. But the, the cool thing was that I was looking at it, and I'm like, wow, this is heavy duty. So I made up my mind, I said, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to go, one last thing I'm going to try. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Gosh, I felt so good the day that I was stop suffering from all of this was it was like a whole new life a whole new chapter for me my husband overcame that addiction we got married a year later and we're still married we're going to be married 
13 years next month. My advice is, you know, anything that you want out of life, you have to work for it. It's not an easy fix. I never knew could exist. You know, me, change completely, leave the past behind, all those illnesses, all the sicknesses, all the hurts, the frustration, you know, the disappointments, all that's gone. God knows what's going on, and, and He knew that once I came that I would give my 100%, you know, I would give my all. Shantse and her boyfriend both started to change and get better thanks to the intelligent faith. Eventually, they married, and now they are a happy and healthy couple with their sights in the future. I will trust in you. Hello, my dear friend. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Do you know that for every problem there is a solution? Apparently, and physically, and by what the world says is impossible. It's impossible for a person that is depressed to get rid from depression. And uh, it's impossible for a person that has a, a type of sickness to be healed. But uh, for God, everything is possible. And that's why we are here right now, uh, ready to help you and show you stories of miracles that are happening. Because the miracles that we hear in the Bible is not stories of the past. Miracles are still happening today. God is still performing miracles today in this year of 2020. And surely that God don't want this year to finish without you see your miracle in your life. If you are in need of help, if you'd like to talk to someone, you don't have nobody to talk to, you have nobody that understands you, you can contact us. You have three ways to contact us. You can call our helpline, that is 08612 1255. Also, you can reach us through the WhatsApp number. And if you are watching me from Facebook, you can, you can uh, reach us through our messenger on Facebook. And we're going to help you. We're going to hear you. We're going to pray for you. But of course, there are things that only you can do. And that's why I would like you to invite you to stay with us and see what people did in order for their lives to change. Powerful testimonies, powerful stories that uh, proves that God is the same of yesterday, today, and forever. Stay with us. I'm a very happy man today. And why did I say that? Because I have peace. Financially, I'm very stable because I have my own business. Uh, my love life is blessed because I'm married to a woman of God. Spiritually, I'm very strong. I overcome any problems that may appear before me. But uh, it wasn't always like this. It was very tough at the beginning. Uh, when my first marriage broke down, I became depressed. I became alcoholic. I was hooked on alcohol, drugs, gambling, all kinds of addiction. And that got me into a lot of trouble. I ended up owing people 43,000 pounds, which I couldn't find a way out of that. And uh, that's how I came to the church. And, uh, I got an immediate help, advice, what to do, how to use my faith to overcome all this problem that God could help me. I said, okay, I was ready to do anything. So the first thing I started was doing was uh, to make a chain of prayers, to be set free from whatever spirit was behind all these problems. So I was coming on Fridays for my deliverance and Monday for my financial breakthrough to, to be free from all these debts, and Wednesday to get to know God, to learn the Word of God and how to put it into practice. And I was doing this for years, but what I noticed was within the first seven weeks of the chain of prayers, I gave up gambling. And the drug, I was not too eager to go for drugs because I could see the improvement in my, in my financial life. I got a good job, and because I was sweating for this money, I didn't feel to spend it on drugs. I was reluctant. I gave up alcohol. The last thing I gave up was cigarette. So that is through practicing what I learned from the church, making purposes of faith. The most important thing to really set you free is sacrifice. You should be ready to sacrifice. I've come a long way, but I will advise people who found themselves in the same situation 
to seek for help and you have nothing to lose. You can only go up. Listen to the advice, make chains of prayers, put into practice what you learn from the church and trust in God by making constant sacrifices and he will transform your life. Miss Angel, what is the result? Well, in the last two weeks, I was waiting. My daughter was, they thought my daughter might have had cancer as well. And then on one Monday I went, they said, well, we need to do a biopsy on her. The very next day I'm at work, I get a call, and my doctor says, we think we've seen something. We need to do another biopsy. Did you bring your daughter here? Yes. I brought her here on that Sunday. You guys had that night visual, and we went in that Monday. They did the biopsy. So we're waiting. For, we was waiting for that. On that Tuesday, they called me. They said, well, you need to come in. We need to check. We see something. So I had to go in one day. The next day, they said, we need to take you immediately into the operating room. So I went into the operating room. They did another full biopsy. They said, okay, it's going to be a few days before we get the results back. They called me two days later. They said, it's good. No, no cancer. Two days later, they called me about my daughter. They said no cancer. No cancer? No. Free. Free. Great is your face. Depression. There are many possible causes of depression. It's believed that several different forces can interact to bring on depression. Due to the millions, even billions of chemical reactions going on in our brain that can affect how we process situations and experience life. Whether it be traumatic moments or simply just seasons changing, all is said to be causes of depression. The perplexing studies behind depression certainly shouldn't be dismissed, but beyond the physical factors of mental illness come the spiritual factors. Behind all the physical aspects of depression is an evil spirit that brings constant thoughts of sadness, crying spells, insomnia, discouragement, and forces you to do your best to manage the symptoms and hope things get better eventually. Depression has stolen your joy, hobbies, pleasures, quality time with family and loved ones. Depression has stolen your life, and it's not fair. You feel devastated, misunderstood, and alone. You've tried doctors, medication, and just shaken it off like everyone says, but nothing works. You're exhausted and longing to go back to a time when you were once happy. Join us at a universal church near you we have an inspiring message and strong deliverance prayers for you or a loved one you know who is currently experiencing depression. Don't lose hope. We know there is a way out of depression. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Depression can be defeated. It's time to end depression and begin living. And before coming to the Universal Church, I suffered from depression. And it was ever since I was younger, at around the age of nine years old, we used to have um, domestic violence in my house, um, my family always yelling, having fights. And um, I used to have the thought that my family didn't love me and that um, they would be better without me. And um, at around the age of 10, it was when my little sister was born. But um, I always had the thought that I was gonna wait until my little sister was born and then I was gonna run away. So I always had everything packed in, in boxes, in bags, and I was always ready to run away from the age of 10 years old. And then my little sister was born and then um, I started feeling more hate towards myself because when she was born, then she was the one that was always babied. So the attention from all of us, all the other siblings, me and my, my twin sister and my brother, it was more centered toward my little sister. And um, it would get to the point where I would get dragged down the hallway. Uh, my dad would jump on my chest trying to break my, my bones. Um, he would choke me against the, the wall or against the floor. There was a time that I went through the wall. Um, I hit my head so hard on the wall that I, I went through the wall. And because of all of this, I, I started to have more hate against myself. And 
Um, at the age of 12, I, I tried drowning myself. At the age of 13, I was starting to take um, pills. And then um, after that, um, I started using a needle to, to cut myself. And I used to cut myself um, on my wrist just to feel the, the ripping of the, of the skin just going through um, my wrists. And then um, at the age of 18, I was almost 18, I ran away from home and um, I thought that I was going to be able to um, live on my own. I thought I was going to be able to, um, to go to school and do other things and everything was going to fill that, that void that I had inside of me. And I ended up um, getting into a relationship and that relationship ended up being the same um, as what I was going through at home. Um, my ex, he used to hit me. Whenever I would try to run away, he would grab me and drag me right back into the apartment. Um, whenever I, I tried um, going through the door, there was a time that he told me that, um, that he didn't suggest for me to, to leave because the only way out was through the window. And he told me that if I did that, I was gonna die. And in my mind, I was like, well, that's the only way out. And um, right after that, I found out I was pregnant and I had so much hate against him and against myself because I didn't want to have a baby with somebody like that. And I started hurting myself and I started drinking more and I started hitting my head against the wall, like trying to knock myself unconscious. And at 13 weeks, I went and I had an abortion and I ran away from um, the apartment. But everything I did, um, I thought it was going to hurt him and it hurt me even more. So because of that, I locked myself in, um, in my own home. Um, I was going house to house, running away from him, trying to, run away, um, trying to hide from him. So I was going from friend to friend. Um, they were all taking turns in, in hiding me because everywhere I went, he would always find me. He went to my parents' house when I stayed there. He broke into the house. Um, in the middle of the night when I was sleeping and then um, the next day in the morning when I was sleeping and that uh, morning he went he grabbed my feet and he was trying to pull me out so that I wouldn't um, be with my parents and everything just it just it was just back to back and I just thought that I just wasn't meant to be happy and um, my mom was coming to church and she would always tell me that um, if I came to church that all of that was going to go away the, the hate, um, the anger, and um, it was in, in one of those times that, um, that I was by myself that I was just like, okay, like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try it, but if it doesn't work, then I'm never gonna go back. And sure enough, I, I went and then um, uh, immediately one of the, the first things that I felt was just um, like comfort. It was like a certainty that I was in the right place, that this is where I was going to find um, the solution to, to the depression that I was feeling inside um, because nobody was able to help me through it. My twin sister, she would always try to come home, pick me up, take me um, to theme parks, take me to restaurants, take me to, um, we would go to Palm Springs like every other week and nothing that she did. And I know she tried so hard to, to take that depression away from me, but nothing helped and um, I was just, in my house and I just locked myself in and I, I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to uh, go to work or go to school. I just I just wanted it to end there. And every night I would just wish that that would be the last time that I went to sleep. And um, I mean, it, it never happened. So that's why I came. And I decided that if, if there was going to be a way out that I was going to, I was going to give it a chance. and. I did, and then little by little, the, the depression, the, um, the hate, the anger against my, my dad, against my mom, against um, everybody in the past that had hurt me, um, all of that started going away. And then um, the depression went away, and um, the anxiety, and everything went away, and everything got replaced with um, happiness and now I don't have any more hate, any more hate against myself, any more hate against my parents, and now I'm a completely transformed person inside and out. And coming from the Universal Church, I broke free from the depression I had, and today I am depression-free.
You see, my dear viewer, you don't need to cry anymore. You don't need to be there depressed anymore. Maybe you are there depressed, you are crying, you think that there is no way out for you, but you see what God is doing today. What you need to do is to leave your complex behind, is to leave your, your, your self behind and join us. Yes, the UCKG Help Center, the Universal Church, has their doors open, ready to help you. Doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter your religion, doesn't matter your position, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter how huge your problem it is, there is solution for all problems. God said, what is impossible for man, it's possible for me. That's why I challenge you, for you to join us. Tomorrow, Friday, we're going to have a powerful prayer. If you are there on the other side and you need a miracle in your life, I would invite, I'll invite you to join me tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the evening. If you live in Stockholm, I am going to be waiting for you. We're going to be open the whole day from 9 in the morning to 9 in the evening, but you can join our, our time services that are 10 in the morning and 7 p.m. here at the Birgelsgotten 106. You are welcome to join us here in Stockholm. If you live in Gothenburg, we have also our prayer that is at 10 o'clock in the morning and that also at 6 p.m. And you can see the address below of your screen. But if you are watching me from aboard, there is a UCKG with their doors open for you because we are established for more than 120 countries. You are our guest to join us and not just to join us in the prayer because I'm not inviting you for you to join a prayer meeting. I'm inviting you for you to change your life. I'm not inviting you for my church. I'm inviting you for your life to change. I am not inviting you for you to change your religions. If you have any type of religions, I am inviting you for a new life because God has a new life for you. Doesn't matter who you are and doesn't matter how big your problem it is. If you want to join us, you are welcome to be here with us. If you want to know more about the UCKG Help Center, you can visit our website, uckg.se. And also, you can watch our, our, the story of the UCKG. Maybe sometimes you don't know what is UCKG about. You don't, or sometimes you are a person that you hear so many things about us. You heard so many, sometimes even bad things about us. You can go to Netflix and join and see our movie that speaks about the story of the church. On Netflix, we have our two movies, Nothing to Lose One and Nothing to Lose Two. You can see the story of the Universal Church, and you can see what is this faith about. What is this God? Because for our God, nothing is impossible. It was a pleasure to be with you, and until next time, may God bless you. I'm not leaving this hospital until I know what's wrong with my daughter. You want out? That's fine with me!